This is the notes page, page for rational equations and rational inequalities, but I'm going to split this up into two videos just to make it um, the video shorter. Um, but I like to teach them together because there's very important distinction between rational equations and rational inequalities. They look almost the same. It's just that if you have an equal sign here, you can do more. Um, so if there's an inequality, you have to do it a different way. All right, so I'm going to start by um, solving a rational equations. The, the steps are there. Uh, first of all, since these are rational, if we were to graph this left side and graph that right side, you would have restrictions. So we have to find those restrictions, and you look, look at the denominator, and you can see that x cannot be negative 1 here, and x also cannot be negative 1 there, because if you set 3x plus 3 not equal to 0, you get 3x is equal to negative 3, and divide, and you get x can't be negative 1. So any other value of x is okay except for x is equal to negative 1. Now you can do that at the beginning, or you can do it at the end. Okay. Um, step 2, you can multiply through the, by the LCD. Now I should put a step 1b right here. You have to, as you may have guessed, you have to factor the denominator first, if you can. So let's add that. Because these two look like different factors. x plus 1 and 3x plus 3 are not the same, but you can pull a GCF of 3 out of here. So if you pull a 3 out, this becomes 3 times x plus 1. So these are not different factors, okay? There's an x plus 1 in this one. All right, so once you've factored it, and you can see what your, um, what your factors are, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply through by the LCD, which is the least common denominator. And so when you have variables, it's, it's just a good idea to, to ask yourself this. What's in this denominator? Oh, x plus 1? Well, that's going to be... Uh, a part of the least common denominator. What's in this denominator? A 2, okay, that's going to be part of the least common denominator. What's in this denominator that's different? See, see this x plus 1? It's already written down. So you don't need to write that one down. But then there's a 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. So your LCD is 6 times x plus 1. And because you have an equal sign, you can multiply through by the LCD. If it's not an equal sign, you can't do this. All right, the other thing that I highly recommend that some people may not recommend, but this minus gets lost all the time when you have to distribute, so I teach students to do plus a negative at the very beginning. Okay, so step two, we found the LC LCD. We're going to multiply through by the LCD, so each one of these expressions is going to get multiplied by the 6x plus 1. I meant that to be red. Okay, so this is going to get multiplied by 6 times x plus 1. This negative 1 half is getting multiplied by that 6x plus 1. And on the right side, you're multiplying by 6 times x plus 1. Alright, so step two, you can multiply through by the LCD, and the reason that this works is you can make anything a fraction. So what's going to happen is things are going to cross cancel. Your fractions are going to go away. This x plus 1 factor cancels with that x plus 1 factor, and you're left with 18 over 1, which is just 18. Plus, this, this 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 times x plus 1. No more fraction. This x plus 1 cancels with that x plus 1. This 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 twice. And you're left with 2 times 1 is 2. No more fractions. So you can do that if you have an equal sign. You can multiply through by the LCD. So if we continue, we get... This negative is attached to that 3, so the chances of us losing it go down. Negative 3x minus 3 equals 2. And then 
you have negative 3x plus 15 equals 2 and then you have negative 3 equals negative 13 you divide by negative 3 and you get x is positive 3 over 13 and as long as this x value is not negative 1 doesn't give you 0 in the denominator that's going to work and you can check it to see if you're algebraically correct by plugging it in but you really are just checking against that restriction all right so let's look at a second example so step one find the restrictions x cannot be 0 x cannot be negative 3 again you can do that at the end uh, step two you want to factor if you can so obviously can't factor x can't factor x plus 3 and you can't factor 1 all right now I'm looking at this I want to just make a comment here sometimes people think oh I can get a common denominator let me just add a 3 to the top and the bottom and that's extremely illegal uh, you can't use addition in that way you can only use multiplication uh, and that's why factoring is so helpful so these are completely different factors they're not the same in any way they're not at all the same they're not close to being the same they're different factors so you have to learn that okay so what is the LCD remember with variables we just pick up everything that we need so this has an X in its denominator so that's part of the LCD this is completely different that's an X plus 3 so that's part of the LCD and then 1 is already there so that's your LCD so what you're going to do is you're going to multiply every one of these terms one two three terms by x times x plus three so x times x plus three times three over x equals two over x plus three times x times x plus three plus six over one times x times x plus three and then you're doing that the reason you're doing that know why you're doing what you're doing is because you want to cross cancel and get rid of all your uh, your fractions so this should work this X cancels that X so no more fraction and you can distribute that 3 and that gives you 3x plus 9 equals over here this X plus 3 cancels with that X plus 3 that gets rid of the fraction and you're left with 2x over here you didn't have a fraction to begin with I didn't need that one there but so to do this make that 6x okay so let's distribute 6x into x plus 3 that gives you 6x squared plus 18x so no more fraction but what do we have we have a quadratic so do you know how to solve a quadratic right you want to set it equal to 0 and you want your x squared term to be positive so I'm going to move everything over to the right and put it in descending order so that's 6x squared and then 2x plus 18x are on the same side so that's 20x minus 3x gives me 17x so that's 20 minus 3 17 and then this 9's got to go over here that's minus 9 okay and we hope that that factors but that's one's a tough one for even me to be thinking about factoring so I'm just gonna go right to the discriminant all right to I doubt it factors but we can check it with a discriminant b squared minus 4ac that's part of the quadratic formula so b squared 17 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 9 is 505 that's not a perfect square so this is not going to factor so we're going to have to use a quadratic formula and I'll go ahead and write it down in case you don't know where that b squared what in the world I'm talking about b squared minus 4ac that's the discriminant that's this right here and if it's not a perfect square then it does this is not going to factor and you have to use the quadratic formula so negative b would be negative 17 plus or minus and the cool thing is I already found that it was 505 over 2 times 6 so that's negative 17 plus or minus let's see if the square root of 505 has a perfect square in it that we can pull out and it doesn't look like it so you can't even reduce that so those are my two roots two solutions 
and obviously they're not 0 or negative 3, so those are my solutions to example 2. All right, let's look at example 3. Let's keep the steps visible. All right, so we have a rational equation. So we're going to multiply through by the LCD, but before we do that, we have to make sure we factor. Okay, so we have to factor the denominators because we want to see the, the linear factors if there are any. So this first part, I just have to factor the x squared minus 2x minus 15. That's x, that's x. The factors of 15, 1 and 15, 3 and 5, that subtract to be 2 or minus 5 and plus 3. And that was a good thing we factored because we can see we already have we have some repeat factors here. Okay, so step two, the LCD. What is the LCD? With, with algebra, you're just going to write down all the things in the denominator. So this x minus 5 and this x plus 3 are factors that are going to be in the LCD. And x plus 3, there's no need to write it twice. It's already there. And x minus 5, you don't need to write it. So that's why it's so important to factor. Okay, so what that means is I'm going to multiply this equation by the LCD. And this time I'm not going to rewrite it. So I'm going to multiply this equation by x minus 5, x plus 3, or this expression, this expression by x minus 5, x plus 3. And remember, we're anticipating what's going to happen. You have to know why we're doing this. We are doing this to cancel out the fraction part, the denominator part. So when we multiply this, it's obviously over 1. So these are the numerator and that's the denominator. This cancels with that and x plus 3 cancels with x plus 3 and you are left with good old 5. Here x plus 3 cancels with x plus 3 and you're left with 6 times x minus 5 which is 6x minus 30. This x plus 5 cancels with that x plus 5 and you're left with 12 times x plus 3 which is, there's a plus right here, 12x plus 36. And this time we don't have a quadratic so we just need to solve for x. So I'll combine like terms. We have 6x and 12x, that's 18x. We have negative 30 and 36, that's 6. Subtract 6. You get negative 1 equals 18x. Don't, don't divide by the wrong thing. You're trying to get x by itself. Divide by 18 and you get x is negative 1 18. And I knew it would happen. I forgot to check my restrictions. See, you can check them at the end. If you look right here where it's factored, x can't be 5 and x can't be negative 3. And as long as your answer isn't either of those two, you're good.